morning guys welcome in oh very shiny today very very shiny how's everyone doing it's good to be back i'm feeling rested ready to cook some delicious stuff yeah morning guys it has been a good morning kind of we just have like a gray weekend for weather wise outside so not really hoping for anything there okay let's get started i'm gonna make a prep list i know that our timer on our sous vide is gonna go off it says 56 minutes so about an hour from now we'll check our duck confit legs that have been going since yesterday's stream like i said we're almost at the 24 hour mark but I think we're gonna have to push it to like closer to 26 hours or 27, but that's why we'll feel it now and kind of determine how many more hours it will take until it's like really just falling off the bone. A duo of duck today, guys. A higher end dish for sure. And if you're someone that likes duck, but have never cooked it before, this is probably the stream for you to watch because yeah, duck, you kind of have to cook it in two different methods. Okay, I'm gonna start with our prep list. So first things first, I guess I'll write down confit duck leg. Okay, so duck breast is gonna be last thing to cook, guys, so that's at the very bottom. Okay, once we check our confit duck leg, why don't we get into our Brussels sprouts? Just quickly rip through those, have them done and just ready to roast up. Dress them with a little bit of oil salt and pepper. I don't think it needs really anything else. Okay, so our rice for the risotto. I have a little bit of mushroom that we can chop up and saute into there. We need to fine, fine dice onion for that. Let's get some herbs into there. Probably do a little bit of each of thyme, rosemary, and sage, which are actually the same herbs that we used in the duck leg to cook in there. So that's where our flavors are all gonna come together in the dish. We don't cook risotto with water, guys, if that's what's guided in the recipe. We always start with some sort of broth, even if it's from a concentrate mixed into liquid, okay? You're always gonna get the best flavor that way. Don't use water. Okay, last thing for the risotto to cheese it up. Well, we need cheese. Okay, that's the risotto. We got the Brussels sprouts on there. We got both of our duck things. I'm gonna do duck sauce. Last thing on the list, creme brulee. Okay, we're gonna switch things up right now from our duck dish since we're actually like almost ready to start cooking it. Amazing. Let's try our creme brulee. 
This is the test. If you can put your jar or container like that, and it doesn't just like seep out the side, it's set. So yeah, even though when we took it out yesterday, bit of jiggle in the middle, right? But you want that bit of jiggle, trust. Okay, let's get out our sugar. I got my torch right here. Just need to light it up. And I think one of the biggest mistakes people make when going to torch the top of the brulee, they don't put enough sugar on top. And that was actually my, my thing that I would always mess up when I first started cooking in a kitchen is, yeah, one of my first roles in the first restaurant I worked at was torching the creme brulees when we got an order in. It took me a few to get there. And then my chef was like, I'm gonna show you how to do this properly and then you'll never do it the wrong way again. And yeah, it does help. So don't skimp on the sugar. Usually go for the sprinkle and yeah, you want it all the way up to the edge. Just gonna kind of dust off my finger and then do like a little shake like that to really get to the edge. And then I just even out the rest of that layer. We're still gonna add a bit more though. Just judging by how that looks. If you can see the brulee peeking from underneath the sugar, you don't have enough. That'll be perfect. And when you light your torch up, you don't need a high, high heat. Let's go with like that. And then I like to just kind of slowly go around the sugar, kind of start it melting. You'll see it start to liquefy. And then don't stay in one area too long. I'm gonna turn that down just a touch. There you go. I usually start around the outside edge first and then work towards the center. And you'll start to smell the sugar as well. When it starts to caramelize, it smells so good. And it's really important that we don't burn the sugar on the top, guys. So a lot of brulees that are sent out to people, they just burn the sugar. It's not supposed to be like burnt. It's supposed to be caramelized, which is why we do this like kind of slower. Make sure the sugar melts properly. Cause yeah, once it is to the burnt stage, well then it just tastes bitter. It's not good anymore. Yeah, for some reason, like wiggling the torch, it really does help even things out. There we go. So all the outside edge is like pretty much fully melted. And now we can start to work on caramelizing it. It should be one nice, even colored layer as well. There you go. And then another note, if you don't add enough sugar on the top, you will actually start to burn the custard from underneath. If there's not enough of a layer and then that's really not good either, right? Don't wanna see any sugar granules left on the top either. Even that, like you can see, maybe not even enough sugar is what I put on. Like I could have still put more around the outer edge. But to me, I think that's perfect. I don't think I would go any more. Cause if we start to try and pile more sugar on now, this other stuff in the middle, it's just gonna burn. And yeah, this is a dish you need to have patience for. So when we zoom out, you can see how nice of a color contrast it is. So let's put that back into the fridge. Careful the rim, right? It's gonna be hot. And if you do this over something metal, that can be potentially hot too, but the bottom part of the jar should be fine. There you go, friends. I'm just gonna do this and get a photo for myself and then we'll try it all together. How you know you've made a good topping for the brulee, I'm just gonna hold that up to the microphone because you should hear it. That is the sugar, that's not the jar. Just showing you guys. The funnest part, the funnest part. Ready? Yeah. Get into it. So 
It's gonna be a little bit soft just on the top where we had the heat from the torch, but otherwise, it should be nice, silky custard. Holy. And so you always get a little bite with the custard. I maybe should have let that put it sit in the fridge a bit longer. So get some of the custard with some of the crunchy topping. That is so good. Yeah, we must have just let it sit out for a touch too long. Maybe a bit of the torch heated up the side because there's no way that that was that soft when we flipped it upside down, right? So this could be a dish that you brew lay up like no more than an hour ahead of time, pop it back in the fridge and then you just have to take it out. And that way you don't have to worry about it maybe softening up from the torch because you can see the sides there quite firm. It really doesn't need anything else with it. Good quality eggs, good quality cream, sugar, and vanilla. Pan is on the stove top for the duck breast. That's one of the longer things. I'm gonna pop this stock pot to the back burner. Cause we're gonna need a like medium sized pot to do the risotto in. Let's prep up our Brussels sprout stuff. And I'm gonna get the oven preheating while we do that. So we don't have to wait for it after. So I like to roast my Brussels sprouts 425 Fahrenheit. I find they crisp up really nice at that heat. Don't get too soggy. Take a few handfuls. These do shrink up a little bit as they roast. So give yourself a little bit extra. Definitely five portions worth there still. So that's good. That'll be enough for Sammy and I. And then if there's any extras later on, I'll munch on those too. Good amount of oil on the sprouts when you go to roast them. If you don't use enough, they will burn. And if you use too much, it's just gonna be too oily. Not gonna be good. Before we toss those up, I'll do the sprinkle of salt. And then a few cracks of pepper. And always add more salt after, but we can't take it away. Mmm, yeah, if you can, use the brown butter. Good one, Pablo. Okay, now let's toss that up. Get it nicely coated. That looks good, guys. Everything looks evenly mixed. And now to get really good roasting, we spread it back out. And then the other note I said to watch is just our little loose leaves. Let's kind of congregate them in the center. Because if they are on the outside of the pan, I find that they brown up really quickly. Let's kind of pop all those loose leaves closer to the middle. Keep the bigger pieces to the outside of the pan. And I find that's how it roasts up the best. So this guy, that's for the risotto. Let's do a medium heat only. We don't want that to get too hot. And then our saute pan. I'm gonna let that sit a little bit longer. So let's line the bottom of our risotto pot with some grapeseed oil. Okay, this is feeling good. So I'm just gonna do a little sprinkle of these onions. So try and divide this or think about seven portions. We're cooking two of them right now. So leave five portions of onion in there. Perfect. Now let's turn that down just a bit still. Back to like medium low. Now stir up our onions. And like I said, we don't wanna brown the onions. We're just sweating the liquid out of them. And you know what? I'm actually gonna add the mushrooms right now too. Nice little handful of the shroomies. 
There's that, and now you can just pack that together for everyone else. Let's stir that up too. The mushrooms are gonna soak up a lot of the fat, but that's okay. Okay, let's add a little sprinkle of our herbs to this mixture too to saute up. And then I'm also gonna add a bit of our rice. So we do about half a cup per person of raw rice kernels. Let's do like just under a cup worth, I'm gonna say. It's okay if a little bit spills. Okay, one, two, perfect. Now let's stir that up. So now we're toasting the rice and us adding the rice to the pot now is gonna cool down the onion and mushroom so it's not gonna keep cooking. So that stops the browning process. Now we're gonna ladle in enough of our warmed broth just to cover the layer of rice. So that's why I turned the pot down. So it's gonna simmer like crazy. And now we wanna cook this really slowly. So that's why we started this first. So it does take about half an hour. I'm just trying to get all the rice off this side too. And then our cooking process now for the risotto. We're gonna keep cooking it on low until it looks like the liquid's almost been cooked out. And that's when we add more of the broth, just enough to cover the rice. And those are the steps we keep taking. So I'm gonna go low, low, low. You really just want it like barely simmering. You don't want a pretty heavy simmer. I can still, I'm gonna add the wine now cause I know it'll reduce out in our first step here. But that's a good point, Pablo. I can't believe I forgot that. So before you add the broth, we would have added a bit of white wine. So I'm just gonna add a couple tablespoons now. Give it a little swirl. And that is that. Okay, turning on our duck breast pan onto medium heat as well. Sprouts are going in. Everything's working. Why don't I set 10 minute timer just so I can kind of keep an eye on things. Okay, now is a good time since we're heating up our duck breast pan, we can season the duck breast too. So I'm gonna come back over to the cutting board. We seasoned the underside already. Now we can do a little sprinkle of salt on the skin. Looks good to me. Now we're just gonna wait for this to get nice and hot before that goes into the pan. That's it. You don't wanna drop your duck breast into a cold pan. Okay, need to add more broth. Now that the rice is peeking out, stir it up. Now that's ready. I can feel it and I can smell it. So we're going skin side down, guys. And yes, you should have a sizzle like that when you drop the duck in the pan. So for the most part, the duck breast is gonna be cooked skin side down and then it's just gonna be a quick flip to finish that underside. So that's why we cook it at a lower heat on the skin side. And I just wanna check this. Don't cook it too quick. I'm gonna turn down the pan a bit. Now I'm gonna go to like medium low heat. So we got a, quite a bit of good color already on there. Okay, another ladle. Give it a good stir. Okay, I'm gonna show you guys a little peek here. Can you also see how the breast has like shrunk and kind of firmed up? Look at this. Like that, to me, looks pretty perfect. I think I'm gonna flip it. I'm gonna go for the flip and do a slow cook on this other side. I'm 
We'll just kind of watch it. Yeah, it's getting toy. That's usually how I know to flip it when it really shrinks up like that. Let's get our uh, last little component here. You can't really have a duo of duck if you only have one part of it. So just pulled out our cold duck leg confit and that'll be going into the pan right away here. Basically when the breast comes out to rest, put your confit in and you can probably just turn off the pan and let it slowly heat up in the fat. Okay, I'm taking this duck breast out guys. Just to show you like how much give it should have. Like just that and then it pops back up. Nice little handful. And then for good measure, crispy skins. Crispy skins. Okay, we'll check on our Brussels in a sec here. Just put in that duck leg back into the fridge. Oh yeah, yeah. It's looking so good, guys. We are very, very near. So all of the little leafy bits have browned up, but you can see like maybe a few more minutes. I'll pop this up to the top, top rack, closer to the element, and we'll finish crisping those last few sprouts. I need a little bit more liquid in there. Whew, that's hot. The um, ladle handle. <laughs> that was hot. Because, yeah, it is a certain consistency we're looking for. Obviously, we want our rice kernels cooked through. And then we make it super saucy by mixing the broth and the cheese together. And then this is where the drop of butter also comes in. And this is how we create the creamy rice. So our mixed cheeses, we have Asiago and Parmigiano Reggiano. Do a nice handful of that. It's quite strong, so you don't need a ton of those hard cheeses. I'll let those melt in. And then this should be heavenly. It's looking really good, guys. Little bit of salt, little crack of pepper, and then the little squeeze of lemon to finish it off. I think that is perfect, guys. I don't know if it gets more perfect. Hello. Look at those crispy nuggets. To me, that's perfect. Like that, that's caramelized. That's not burnt at all. Those are like some of my favorite little scrunchums. Cheesy mushroom risotto. So see how we have this like looseness of sauce around it, but it's not just like running all over. To me, that is perfection. Get a few good scoops of that. Like to kind of offset it from the center, leave some room for our duck. And to me, like that's exactly how the risotto should look as it should be kind of just surrounded by this little bit of sauciness, but it shouldn't just like flow out on the plate. Correct me if I'm wrong. Spruits. I'm not really garnishing these with anything because they're going to soak up that delicious duck sauce that we made anyways. The pulled confit leg. Give that a little toss. I like to kind of pop that just like in the center, pile it up. And then come in with your bit of skin. Oh, <laughs> yeah. I like to start at this end and then work my way towards the thicker end. And that way I can kind of like taste this end piece. Oh, baby. So far though, that first slice, I like to slice my duck around a quarter inch thick. So 
So like that end piece. The other thing we can do, if you ever come into this point and like the thick side is a bit under, keep it like this if you've already sliced it and just kind of pop it back into the pan off of the heat. Just the residual heat will bring that up. You'll be surprised. I'm gonna do it fanned this way for myself, I think. Yeah, I'm gonna go this other way. So I can pop that little end piece there. And then that, I like to kind of put it that way. Okay, last thing on the dish. That's looking good, I think. And it is just like a jus, right guys? So a loose sauce. Put it over there. And that little bit of broth, gonna bring the risotto together with everything too. I think that's it. Like, it doesn't look amazing, but heck, the flavor on it is gonna be delish. I am gonna try this like rarest piece so that we can determine how we feel about it. So far, it doesn't seem like it would be chewy at all. It's not. Seasoning on that is perfect as well. The crispy fat on there, oh man. Okay, let's try some confit with the risotto. Got a sneaky, sneak some little Brussels sprout leaves on there. Mmm, mmm. That's actually fab. I knew there was a reason we did Brussels sprouts two weeks in a row. That risotto with those Brussels sprouts, like the earthiness of it and the caramelization with the duck leg confit. What? I'm gonna go for another perfect bite again. The trio. Everything goes together so well. Okay, see you guys tomorrow at 11 a.m. Pacific. As always, thank you to everyone for all the new follows today. Lots of awesome resubs. If you're a new sub, welcome in. Thank you for joining us. Thank you for all the biddies as well. Going towards that food truck fund. Pretty amazing. Other than that, guys, stay safe, stay healthy wherever you are, and we'll be on Discord if you need us. Okay, see you tomorrow. Bye!